Hey everybody, I'm back again after surgery with another Blender video for you today. So today we're going to be looking at something nice and simple. We're going to have a look at how to make an object rise out of fluid and have the fluid interact with it. Uh, it should be nice and simple. We're going to be doing it in Eevee so it won't be too hectic on your computer. And um, yeah, let's just dive straight into it without further ado. I think everyone's been waiting long enough for another video. So, working in Blender 2.9, as per usual, since the update, uh, you can see I'm still on 2.90, um, but it should still work the same if you're on a newer version, so don't stress too much about that. First thing we want to do is create a new file, and we're going to be using the standard cube, which uh, we start out with. This will be the cube that's going to interact with the water uh, that we're going to be creating. So we can just keep this as it is. And the first thing we want to do with it is go over to the Properties tab on the right hand side over here. And we can go over to, we're looking for Physics Properties. We're going to go to Fluid and Type and we're just going to say Effector. And this is just going to allow your cube to interact with the water. So what I do want to do is I just want to flatten the cube a little bit um, so you can use whatever shape you want. And yeah, I'm just going to do this over here Whoop. and that'll do it. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're going to add in another cube. So let's just shift A, mesh and cube. And this one is going to be our water. And I've still got the scale tool highlighted there. So I'm just going to grip this little node over here pull it out, uh, make it something like that, a little bit more there, a little bit higher, and that's pretty good. And then once we've done this, before we start with the water, we can just save our file, click on save. I have my little blending folder over here, and I'm just going to create a new file and say object interaction. enter and go in there and then just save our blender file all right and as per usual gonna go straight for the quick uh, quick effect because uh, it's really the easiest so we're just gonna with our water selected we're gonna go object we're gonna go down to quick effects and quick liquid so it should automatically give you a solid uh, volume of water. I couldn't think of the word volume. So give you a solid volume of water. If you press play, it's going to drop it. So we don't want that to happen. So what we want to do is click on our domain over here. We're going to move it up a little bit like that. And then we're going to scale our actual water to make sure that it fits in our domain nicely. Uh, so it's maybe a little bit oversized. That shouldn't be a problem. All right, so that's fine. So if we do that, uh, we can just rebake that quickly. So we click on our domain and we go over here and we first of all want to say is resumable. Okay, the next thing we want to do is choose our destination for our fluid simulations data so as you can see on top it's already selected blending object interaction so that is fine so we just want to make sure of that then we can just go over here i'm going to keep it at 250 frames because that'll uh, leave a nice interaction with the water i think that'll look really great and as i'm looking at it my cube is a wee bit small so i'm just going to make that a little bit bigger yeah that'll that'll do good and move it down all right, and then we just want to bake in our information. So once we've done that, we can go over here to type, uh, modular, and then, uh, yeah, let's have a look over here and bake our data. We'll up all that information now. So we just want to make sure that everything is looking good like it should. So let's see, let's let that bake. So this is the actual speed that we're baking at, just to kill the silence, just so that you know. All right, so there we have it. 
So if we press play, we can see our liquid is sitting nice and still. And that's exactly what we want. And you can already see that there is some interaction around the cube. It's already aware that it's supposed to interact with the cube. All right, so that's perfect. Now what we want to do is make the cube move. Simple. And I'm going to be expanding on this technique uh, a lot in the upcoming videos which I've got planned. So for today, we're just going to make it rise up out of the water. And to do that is super simple. Um, I discovered this a while ago and I thought, wow, that's actually ridiculously easy. So with your cube highlighted, you're just going to click I and then select location. Then you're going to move your frame over here, your progress thingy. I'm not even 100% what you actually call it. 100% sure. My goodness. Tongue twisted. All right. So that's fine. You move it first. Then you move your object up. Okay. And then you're going to hit I again. Okay. So now if you move your little progress thingy over here, it's going to go up and down and up and down. And that's exactly what you want. All right. So you should note that the more frames you put between keyframes, the slower it's going to move. Uh, the less keyframes you put between it, the quicker it's going to move. Um, so that you can see it's a nice 30 frames is quite nice. It moves nice and fluid. And now we want to bake it again because we've made a change. Whenever you make a change to your simulation, you want to bake the information again. Uh, Simulations tend to break because we don't bake them and then we freak out. We make more changes. So whenever you make a change, whether it's sizing it up, sizing it down, bake your information as soon as you've done that. So what I want to do is free my data and then I want to up the water resolution to like 64. I'm going to keep it like that, bake the data and you can see it's taking a little bit longer to bake because now there's an actual simulation happening. We've got this thing rising up through the water. The water is flowing off of it and it looks really nice when you finish with it. So let's let that bake and we'll get back to it in a minute. Alrighty, so she's done baking and there you can see we have an interaction with our liquid. So let's take it back, press play and see what we're working with. And that's really nice. So I like that. So you've got your little bits of water running off the edge and obviously the higher quality you make it, the better. The water is moving a little bit slow. So it's, it's more like a goo or a sludge than a... Uh, than water uh, or a nice liquid but I'm happy with that because it pretty much focuses on the interaction the water interaction so you can speed that up if you want to speed that up um, you can do that by the time scale on the right here by your domain properties or fluid properties uh, you'll have a look and you'll see over here it says time scale and you can maybe like make it 1.5 then the water will or the liquid will move a hell of a lot faster um, so that's up to you and um, right so that is finished so let's put on the mesh 
and then decide what this project is going to look like. So with our domain selected again, make sure it's selected. You can make sure your physics properties are selected and we're going to scroll down and we're going to tick this little guy that says mesh. The upper is factors are already two. Um, so this improves the quality of what your water is going to look like when we render it. I like to pop it up onto three. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to bake, but it's fine uh, for me. So just remember, if you're doing this, it's going to be a little bit more taxing on your machine. So if you're using a basic office computer, um, I don't really recommend doing it. Uh, so if you do, you would really have to keep an eye on your PC. If it starts getting hot, uh, just pause your bake, let it cool down, carry on and keep repeating the process. But be wary of damaging your PC. So let's hit bake on the mesh. And once again, we're going to wait. And I just want you to see how slow it is baking. This is the actual speed. So it's not too slow. Oh, there you go. So <laughs> it's pretty slow. So let's let that bake again and then we'll get back to it and make it look all nice like a project should. And she's done baking. And there we have a nice little simulation happening. So if we can press play, it's a little bit scratchy because of the uh, lovely, lovely little computer that I'm using. But there we can see it interacts beautifully with the water or our sludge anyways. You can see the water running off of the object, the water coming up with the force so that's nice now we want to make it look pretty and we're gonna do that in our shader editor but before we do that to make sure it's not too taxing on our PC we're gonna to come to the properties on the right hand side again render properties make sure she's in Eevee so it seems like it's standard in Eevee now and we can go over to our rendered view all right so now as you can see uh, it is actually been created for cycles, which is a little bit more realistic. So before we carry on and make any more changes, we just want to hit save again. All right, so let's open up another window over here. We're just going to drag and drop like that. And we're going to choose editor type and we're going to choose shader editor. So you can pretty much just delete both of these nodes. So you can select them delete and then we're going to add a new node so to do that you can just hit shift a and then we're going to take a shader and we're looking for principled bsdf so it's just a straightforward shader and all we want to do with this is uh, connect it to the surface and that you can see we're able to see our water again and choose a color for your liquid so on my wife's request uh, she likes magenta so we're going to choose magenta i've got the hex code for that so i'm going to click on hex select that and I'm just going to stick over here hashtag and ff 0 ff and that's going to make it a nice magenta and you can leave it like that if you want so you can change the color of your cube i'm not going to do that though what i am going to do is just select the light and change that light to the sun and bring down till about 15 there you go we can see it nicely got some shine and you can change up that shine as well um, so if you click on it so with your shader editor still open you can go to roughness and drop that roughness bring it up like you want uh, so that's nice and that's pretty much it you can see a little invisible cube here and that's just from our domain uh, which was the liquid and you can just delete that it won't make a change and now we can maybe change the world color um, bring up that brightness uh, maybe make it a little bit of a blue like a contrasting color uh, just note as you can see that the color of your world affects your render so if you've got blue you're gonna have uh, a blue tinge on your liquid as it is reflective uh, but I'm pretty much happy with this and now it's just a matter of getting a nice angle and rendering the project so I like this angle so I'm gonna just 
press Control, Alt and Zero together to snap my camera to this view. Now we can go to our output settings. A uh, nice thing about uh, working with EVs, you can pretty much put it straight into any of these uh, video files. So I'm just going to go with MPEG over there. And um, yeah, now we can choose where it's going to send it to. So you can see my old renders over here. I'm going to go to local disk, blending, and then the uh, do, 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 we're looking for our object interaction. And I'm just going to put over here video and hit accept and now we can render so we can just go over here to the top left render and render animation and this usually goes pretty quick uh, so we've got frame one frame two and it renders really nice and quick another advantage of working in eevee and it does not stress out your computer so we're going to let that render and then we're going to see what our final product is Right, we can close this window and then we can have a look at our render. So you can click over here or you can uh, view just the last frame that was rendered. And once we've done that, we can just close. We can go over to render and view animation or click control F11. And there you go. Looks very nice. I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, that's it for today's tutorial. Thanks everybody and have a great weekend.